Okay, so we're going to do number two in the 3C packet together. Let's do a quick sidebar. Before, before we do the 3C packet, let's talk about what we do if there are three. So, for instance, if somebody goes 8 a.m., eight meters east, and then 10 meters at, uh, we'll say that's 30 degrees north of east, and then 15 meters at 10 degrees north of west. How do you get a resultant for that? Same way you get a resultant for anything else. You connect the tail of your first vector to the head of your last vector. That's all. Now, in a case like that, you've got one handy little advantage. That advantage being, in this vector, what's the total y displacement in that vector? Zero. There is no y. So you only have to do two of the triangles. Um, you know, you have to do a triangle for this one. And you have to do a triangle for this one. Badly drawn, badly drawn. Why is it zero? Um, because it's due east. So there's no y component. That, that entire displacement is on the x-axis. So, you know, if you make a list, whoops, if you make your little list of dx1, dx2, or I'm sorry, dy1, um, for your first vector, dx1 is 8 meters east. dy1 is 0. You know. East or west, yeah, where it's totally on the x-axis. Um, if, it, if it was, you know, 8 meters due north, that would be an x-displacement of 0. So all you're, all you're doing, same thing you've done with everything else, <clears throat> your total x-displacement is equal to displacement x1 plus displacement x2 plus displacement x3, and you could go on and on. You can have 15 x displacements. It doesn't matter. You're just looking at your total x displacement. You're looking at the big picture triangle. So, um, you know, and your total y displacement is the same thing. dy1 plus dy2 plus dy3. And again, you can have 15 of them. It doesn't matter. It's just bookkeeping at that point. Um, for this particular example, where is our overall triangle? It's right there. Oops. And there's, you know, so if we, if we look at it, our overall x is that little tiny bit because our dx3 is in opposition to our dx1 and 2. And our overall y displacement is upward. Um, all the things where we do have a y displacement are upward. They're or in this. They're north. They're north. But in it's, in essence, it's that way. Does that make sense? So you can have a billion of these things. The resultant is always, always, always going to be. Let's make that a little bit more. It's always, always, always going to be connecting the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector, regardless. Yes, ma'am? And how do you know where to put the triangles that you're drawing? Okay, let's look at that in a general sense. Okay, so here we have a plane that takes off, a little tiny, like, you know, remote control plane or something, 27 above the horizon for 17 meters, and then the... The little RC operator um, has to land the plane for some reason. It comes down at, for 45 meters at 20 degrees below the horizontal and lands and taxis for 20 meters. So where's our first triangle? And I'll do this 
and use our traditional color scheme. So, what's our if we look at this first vector, there's our x displacement. There's our y displacement. Does that make sense? It doesn't have to, but it makes your life easier. So, is your is your question? Could I? Well, it doesn't matter. Could you could you draw this as the y displacement and that as the x displacement? Yeah, you could. But then you have to figure out that angle. Mm, so you have to draw it in where you are, you know, the angle for it to be easier. Well, it, you, don't it, you don't have to. My my little pea brain, I tend to screw up more if I draw the wrong if I draw it on the outside because I forget that that's not the angle that I have written down and. Yeah, you, you basically use that as one of the three angles in, an, in a 90 degree triangle. <clears throat> so let's get rid of the yellow lines. You can draw the other triangle. You just have to, and there are some people well, I who... Want, I'd rather draw it that way. I just didn't know. Yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, and that's why, you know, I, I typically choose to draw it that way. Because I tend to screw it up if I don't. I tend to, I make my triangle on the outside and then I use the angle on the inside. Duh. Oops. You know, so here would be your second triangle. Okay, does that help? X is always along the, the yeah, yeah. So you know, there is your dx one. There is your dx two. Yeah, it's just co it's just the coordinate system you've known your whole life. Okay. Um, now, for the third leg of this, I'll draw this in a pretty purple. Where's your triangle? There is not one. So, whoops. Yes, this is dx three. dy three is equal to zero. So, what's the joke? Huh? Yeah, 20 is part of the displacement, but that's not particularly funny. Where's your triangle? You're right, it's true. Yeah, there's no triangle. Here's, here's your overall triangle. Oh, gosh, no. No, I tend not to make jokes like that. What was the thing that they had the That was nothing to do with 9-11, you realize that. That was a flock of geese. No, this is just the joke is there's no overall triangle. The Y displacements cancel out. If the plane lands, there's there's no overall Y displacement. Not a joke. No, 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 no. I'll joke about a lot of things, you know. Typically not tragedy. Um, I know that I would give you one this easy on a test because I'm meaner than that. You know, you could write whoops. You should just see who's paying attention. Yeah. Right. Nice, nice try, Jack. Um T Y total equals dy1 plus dy2 ah, plus dy3. Here would be the way to write this if you wanted to get away without doing the work. You could then write dy3 equals 0, dy1 equals negative dy2, and then dy total equals 0. But there you've shown me mathematically that you didn't just forget to do your Y's. You know, you're showing me, hey, look, it all cancels out. And I would give you credit for that. So, all right, so the longest thing we found was a 10 meter long python. Suppose a coordinate system large enough to measure the python's length is drawn on the ground. Snake's tail is placed at origin and snake's body is stretched. And this is obviously not drawn well to scale so that it makes a angle of 60 degrees, 60.0, with positive x-axis. So find the x and y coordinates of the snake's body. So x, x coordinate of the snake, y of the snake. So what you have to do is, again, visualize a triangle, and I'll color code it. So the x sort of aspect of the snake will be how far out on the x-axis the snake goes. The y-aspect of the snake 
Oh, terribly drawn. This will be... Okay, so badly drawn, but you get the picture. So this is Y of the snake. This is X of the snake. So, so far so good? All you're doing is breaking We're down... We're using this as the Y instead of this. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. Because remember, you can move vectors perpendicular to themselves. Okay, so, I just was asking because you wrote Y over there. Well, yeah, this is the Y axis. Okay. So what we're doing is we're superimposing this whole picture on a traditional coordinate system. Okay. You know, so we're just imposing that on... Yeah, this was just me listing the things we need to find. I can, okay. I can delete it. Oh, no, that's okay. Okay, so if we want to find this dimension of the snake's body, and we know that this is... 10 meters, you've got the angle, and you've got the hypotenuse. How would you find the opposite? Well, the sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So in this case, sine of 60 equals the y of the snake over 10 meters. So the sine of 60 times 10 meters equals the y dimension of the snake. Does that make sense? Yeah, this is kind of what... Okay, so to find the x, and I'll just finish this explanation out, we have the adjacent line, so the cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which in this case means cosine of theta would be the x of the snake, so we're over 10 meters. Y and X. Yes. So yeah, that's all resolving a vector is, is using using whatever angle the vector is making and finding the X and Y components of the motion. You can think about it um, if we think in terms of vectors like going around city blocks. If you went, you know, three blocks one way and three blocks the other way, if there were no buildings in the way, you could take a straight line path. You know, and if you were able to take that straight line path, you're just looking at how far one direction and how far the other direction you are. So, yep, that's all it is.